probably burned books. I'm going to try to read this. I have called this age Channelwood. It is a very different world, though it is exactly how I imagined it. It is still amazing to see it with my own eyes. Water covers this age as far as I can see except for a small rocky island. Elsewhere, there are only trees which grow directly out of the water. A myriad of thin wooden passages are built just above the water and disappear into the forest. I assume they were built for some, some time ago, for they appear aged. I am eager to discover more about this land and its people, but I have arrived here late, and I must rest. I was awakened this morning by strange noises coming from a pathway adjacent to the one on which I had slept. I saw a group of monkey-like people heading in, my, heading in my direction. They had not seen me yet. I did not feel threatened by their presence. The response to me was one that I would have never expected. After staring at me for a short time, they fell to their knees and began what appeared to be some sort of ceremonial worship. I tried to speak to them, but they did not understand my language. Instead, they indicated through enthusiastic hand motions that I was to follow them. As we walked, I began to notice that the waters below us were changing colors. Slowly, subtly, they would change from deep blue to muddy orange, then from muddy orange to beautiful clear. I was so intrigued by the water, I hardly noticed that we had arrived at a ladder. Climbing the ladder led us to their village, which is about ten meters above the water and can only be reached by rope ladders that stretch from the lower paths to the village level approximately halfway up the grand trees. It is very interesting to watching these people carry out their daily tasks. Even after watching for hours, I did not understand exactly what they were doing. At sunset, they motioned for me to follow them. I followed the creatures to the doorway of the enormous hut. Strangely, once inside, I found that the hut appeared even larger than it had from the outside. The walls were garnished with bright metals in the center of the hut sat, a, sat the leader of the these people. At least, he appeared to be their leader, for he sat a meter off the floor in a thick throne. Guards surrounded the strong creature, who was dressed in many exotic, colorful fabrics. Next to the leader sat a old, very old human, at least to some extent he appears human. His hair, which, is, which was only on his face and head, was completely gray, almost white and hung very long around his frail body. His thin head hung limply by an almost grotesque neck that could, only, that could not hold its head up to look at me. But what a surprise, this creature could speak my language. Shortly thereafter, I was given a bed with some hand motions that looked to be telling me to go to sleep. I look forward to learning more. As I suspected, the ancient creature is a human but he is old beyond his own reckoning, and seems almost insane. However, the tree dwellers almost revere him as a god. They are treating me now in the same fashion, which makes me feel very uncomfortable. It is almost impossible to understand this old man. His voice is feeble, but wild. He has adopted much of the language of the tree dwellers. He himself told me he had not spoken our own tongue in ages. He attempted to explain to me the history of this place. The following is my best translation of what he has told me. Many years ago, the humans and tree dwellers lived together in this place, which was then a vast island. They interacted very little. The humans dwelt on the ground, and the tree dwellers lived high above the humans. Occasionally, the island was disturbed by mysterious rumblings, which had randomly some sort of tectronic or volcanic action, I suspect. 
the sometimes slight, sometimes heavy tremors would only last a short time. Then they would stop, allowing everything to return to normal. One day, things changed. The rumbling began and grew quickly to unprecedented levels. Soon it became apparent that the entire island was sinking slowly into the ocean around them. Many of the islands died that many of the humans died that day, but not before sacrificing themselves in order to stop the sinking of the island. The humans who lived through this catastrophe moved into the trees where they gradually died out, maybe because they were unequipped for such an environment, but I am not sure. This is the story the old man communicated to me, although many details are very unclear in my mind. I am especially confused as to how the humans saved the island from completely sinking. In fact, I doubt the accuracy of that part of the story. The island must have stopped on its own. Yet, the old man believes in the truth of the story, as he had been there. And the tree dwellers worship, worship him. And apparently, all humans, as if he, er, they were heroes or gods. The old man ended our conversation today with an event which I will never forget. He began gripping my hands tightly, murmuring something about rest and sleep. He then said, we had expected you to come sooner. These actions filled me with a sort of immediate dread. With much effort, he stood to his feet. I tried to help, but he pushed me away with more force than I imagined his frail body contained. The tree dwellers quietly surrounded him with very solemn faces. Then they kneeled before him. He walked to each and placed his hand on their head. All the while, he murmured words which I did not understand. Finally, he turned to me and smiled. Then he closed his eyes and walked out the door and off the narrow path high in the trees. The tree dwellers were silent. They began a procession down the nearest rope ladder. As I was descending, I saw several of them pick up the body. He had fallen onto a lower level of the walkway and carry it away. He was laying down at the dead end of a short pier-like structure. With the use of some potion, one of the tree dwellers uh, lit the pier on fire and I watched as the flames engulfed him. As this strange funeral proceeded, the waters around the pier changed to dull green. This morning I awoke, finding it hard to even believe the previous events, previous evening's events. The water is a dull green for as far as I can see now. For some reason, the water no longer shifts color. As I wander throughout the pathways, the creatures watch me, curious to see what I will do next. They are constantly offering me strange objects of affection. I even found food outside the doorway to the room in which I had slept. This is a unique race of beings. I hope to learn their language soon, so that I may learn more from them. I've lived on this world for three months, off and on, and the tree dwellers have shown me great hospitality. I am even beginning to learn bits of their language. I've decided to return home for an extended stay with my loving wife and my sons, and hopefully return with them. However, I am sure Catherine will once again refuse. I think this age would be a wonderful experience for them all, and I, at least, look forward to how Cirrus and Agnar will react to this curious, to its curious inhabitants. I'm going to pause there for a second. We know wife, Catherine, sons, Cirrus, and Agnar. We just got that information. All right, moving on. As uh, apparently each of the colors are long periods of time between. Like we can tell, these little dots mean new journal entry, but these appear to be new journal entry long time forward. All right, back here. Catherine is staying behind, as expected. My sons have returned with me, and they enjoy this age very much. They get along very well with the tree dwellers, and are picking up their language surprisingly fast. I have no doubt that it will not be too long before they can speak with the tree dwellers much better than myself. 
I am leaving tomorrow to check on Asmoian age. Cyrus has suggested that I allow him and his brother to stay. Though the idea unsettles me, I know the boys are growing up rapidly. The hospitality of these creatures is such that I could think of no better place to leave them alone for a short while, so I will consent to their request. I warn the boys not to take advantage of the respect the tree dwellers have for their ideas. They seem to understand my warning, and I have faith they will follow it. Much to my dismay, upon entering the Everdunes, I learn that Pran and her people are continuing to be menaced by the Kochtik. I fear for their survival and plan on returning to her shortly, after checking on Cirrus and Agnar here. See Everdeen's journal for more information. After watching Cirrus and Agnar, I see they are handling things very well, and I think I can put to rest any fears about leaving them in Channelwood again. And for a little, and for a little longer time, that's weird. Change font color. The tree dwellers seem slightly distressed that I am leaving, but are happy that Cirrus and Agnar are staying behind again. I have been gone for over three days. I've been to many different places. I had to tell Cirrus and Agnar about Pran's death today, and they were visibly shaken. Although they only remembered her from their childhood. Catherine has suggested that it would be wise for Cirrus and Agnar to leave Channelwood for a while, and I have to agree. They will be returning with me when I leave again. I have told my sons that they will be returning with me in two days. They spent the entire night telling me of an adventure they experienced in my absence, and it was rather remarkable. It seems they constructed a boat with the creatures and traveled some ways out into the surrounding waters. I enjoy hearing them talk excitedly of their adventures, and I'm reminded of my own adventures as a child. I finally understand why the tree dwellers have been giving me their many inks and insisting I write with them. Looking through some of my past entries, I see now that the inks have changed from the black, I thought they were, to various different colors. I've shown some of the... Ew. Ew. There we go. I have shown some of the creatures my journal, and they laughed and howled. I do not. N I did not know they had such a sense of humor. Even now, I look through this very colorful journal, and I cannot help but laugh myself. We will be returning tomorrow, so my sons are with the creatures for their last night here. They have been told. They have told me that they would like to come back to Channelwood again and also asked if they could come visit some other ages alone. Though I will have to think over their request, I believe they have proven to me that they are trustworthy and responsible. Catherine will also have to help me decide whether they are ready to travel alone, for now I must give my farewells to the creatures, for I do not know how long it will be until I visit this age again. Hmm. So this is, this looks like a very important piece of information right here. And so does this. Uh, you'll find that the journals are little help. They're not only background, they are also clues. So they have important information inside of them. All right. So he mentioned a journal, but going to tell you right now there are only five journals that survived this burning uh, one is channel wood one is stone age one is science age that looks like rhyme this is mechanical age there is a book in here, and I need to find... There it is. Alright, so this book looks very burnt, but it's not. I actually need this book. You'll recognize uh, these look very similar to what was inside the fireplace. 
I'm sorry, I'm going to have this voice for a while, because once I start it, I can't get rid of it very easily. Alright, on to Stone Ship. Um, I'm pretty sure this is just going to be its own video. I'm going to just have a video of me reading all of this library, because it's, and it's an extensive library. Emmett was the first to live on the rocks. He named them the rocks because that is what they were. A group of sharp rocks clustered together in the middle of the large sea. This is where Emmett lived. He enjoyed his life. Emmett would occasionally swim to nearby rocks as it was never too far of a distance. One day another person appeared on the rocks. For no apparent reason to Emmett, Emmett named this new person Branch. Emmett and Branch quickly became friends, swimming and hunting for fish together often. Emmett showed Branch the simple cave in which he lived on the largest rock. Soon, Branch discovered a place where he decided to live. Also on the same large rock, the sun always shone brightly in their world. Oh, no. Branch discovered a place where he decided to live, also on the same large rock. The sun always shone brightly in their world, and the water was always dazzlingly clear, allowing them to see almost to the deep ocean floor which surrounded them. Though the sun always shone, it was never too hot for the boys. A light breeze always came from the north and cooled the area down. One day, while Branch was swimming and having fun in the water, he noticed another boy swimming. Branch brought the new boy to Emmett to find out what to call the new boy. Emmett said the new boy will be called Will. Will was soon a part of the group, and all three of the boys swam and enjoyed their perfect world. At least, that is the story I was told when I arrived today to the, on the island. Emmett, Branch, and Will were surprised to see me at first, but even before the night ended, they were all becoming good friends. Today, the second day on this newly created age, a strange thing happened. It was not strange to me, but the three e-boys did not understand what was happening. While I was relaxing under a large tree on one of the smaller island, rock islands, it began to rain. It was a nice rain that lasted for about an hour in the morning. I explained to the boys that the rain was not harmful, yet they obviously still feared it. Before going to sleep tonight, I told the boys I would leave the following day. I told them that while I was gone, I would make a surprising change in their world. They didn't understand. Not that I expected them to. I still do not fully understand what happened today. I was experimenting with the art, testing the limits of rules as dictated to me by my father. I attempted to create a boat by writing it into the world. I thought everything was planned correctly. But somehow, the boat had become gripped by the rock and broken in half. Although this test did not turn out as I hoped, I now have answers to a few of the questions my father never answered. As for the boat, I can see the boys enjoying it anyway, and that with that I am pleased. They have played on it all day. Even though the boat cannot move, I have enjoyed studying from it. It is a much sturdier platform than the jagged rocks. In the course of my observations, I have learned some very interesting things regarding the solar system of this age. The nights are absolutely beautiful here. I have made note of them. Note of and named a number of constellations that pass above me. Also during the night, I catch glimmers of light from the horizon, which I have not been able to discover if it is created by some natural phenomenon or by additional people on far off islands or rocks. I should very much like to discover which. I rather suspect it is additional people, which would explain the appearance of Branch and Will. The rain today was slightly heavier than usual. Just when the boys were getting used to the light rains, a small storm arrived. They were frightened of the heavier rain, not to mention the thunder and lightning. The rain has never fallen here until recently, as the boys tell me. I would like to discover why it is falling now. Regardless, 
I have decided to return home for a short while. I have also been thinking of some plans for a lighthouse that I hope to construct soon. I think that perhaps by shining a bright light toward the horizon, it might prove my suspicions regarding additional inhabitants. They would be curious about the light and travel to discover its source, if they have the means. I returned with many tools that I will need for construction of the lighthouse. I have decided that once the lighthouse is completed, I will leave for some time and let the world's own imagination have control. We have worked three weeks on the lighthouse and now are making great progress. The rock we were building on seems not to be as secure as I would like. I have had to alter my plan slightly, but those alterations pose no real problem. The boys are quite strong and have been helping me immensely. I estimate construction will be done within two days. Just saying, this is a very good hand-drawn picture. I'm just saying. The lighthouse is finished, and we are all proud of our creation. The boys are amazed at the structure wrought from rock with their own hands. That evening, we powered up the generator, much to the boys' dread at first, and shined a great light to the horizon for many hours. I stayed the night on top of the lighthouse, and in the morning awoke to observe the sunrise without my being coated with the chilly blanket of ocean dew I had become accustomed to. It was Will who first saw the girl. She was swimming not far from the boat where Will was getting ready to hunt for fish. Then Will noticed a man not far away from the girl. Emmett was very pleased to meet the additional neighbors. I feel pleased to leave this age. I've set in motion events that have nothing to do with the writing or the arts. I've set in motion events that have nothing to do with writing or the art that will come that have a more profound impact on this world than I could have ever written. I think Stoneship Age, Bird's Eye View. I think of this of it I think of it this age that's very bad writing. I think of it this age as a gift to myself that I will wrap up and open someday in the future, only to discover that it has changed so much that it, indeed it is a surprise. Besides, I have yet another new age that awaits me. It seems I am going to need, to, uh, need some way to travel underwater in this new age. So much planning is in order. It has been ten years since I left this age. Which I have since called the Stone Ship Age. Upon returning, I cannot believe the changes that have taken place. The original three boys have grown into adults, and there are many new faces that I do not recognize. Brant's told me that it has not rained for seven years. The cool breezes are back again. They are all very content, and have been serving me with new foods and showing me new materials they have discovered. It even seems they have found gold somewhere. I see it in many forms around the island. My lighthouse has been kept in perfect condition, and it looks as if they tried their very best to keep it so. Yet I have noticed, noted that the entire rock it was built on has sunk approximately 40 to 50 centimeters. After a wonderful visit with my old friends, I wonder aloud with them what things will be like here another 10 years all right so these are the constellations he found and I could go about drawing these but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave this book I'm going to write a note for myself. Mm. 
I can't do handwriting because I'm not actually using a pen. And I also can't spell. Alright, so there's a note for me that the constellations are in the Stone Ship Age book. Age is this the scientific age? No, Salentic age. <laughs> it has been a while since I've heard only silence, and I enjoy it greatly. I think, for some reason, I do not feel altogether welcome in this new world in which I have arrived. But how could I? Be unwelcome in an age with no inhabitants. It is, of course, only in my head. This world is very beautiful, but I think I have yet to ever write in a journal that an age I have inked is so horrid or disgusting. From the grassy hill from where I am standing, I can see green fields below along with a few scattered forests. A rather large lake looms with some distance from where I am standing, yet the waters blue can be seen play, plainly from here. The air is fresh, and the sky is sparkled with white clouds. It is absolutely breathtaking, and yet that strange feeling again. Perhaps it is the hot breeze that continues to blow from the north, hotter than I would have imagined. It almost singes my skin, and I feel quite uncomfortable when it comes. I will try to ignore it. Night has almost arrived, and the sunset is spectacular. Oranges and reds have settled above the western horizon. Though night has come, the horizon still glows red long past the sunset. Dark reds flow from the horizon and blend into the black sky. Again the feeling and I am beginning to believe it is not all in my head. I must sleep now. I will need my strength to explore more tomorrow. I have had to return home due to an unpredictable natural occurrence, more frightening than I have ever experienced. I was awakened by terrible shakings on the ground and explosions all on all sides of me. Gigantic balls of fire were falling from the sky, and I immediately left in fear of my life. I must remember to bring a mist linking book with me when I return, in case the one I left here has been destroyed or damaged. I have returned to a different world than the one I left only three months ago. It has been transformed into a barren, desert land, with only gigantic craters scattered across the land to provide variety. Strangely enough, the small grassy hill where I spent my first night remains exactly the way I found it. Apparently, the falling meteors did not hit this area, leaving an oasis in the midst of a horrible desolation. The hot wind, I remember, has turned into a rather pleasant breeze, which is at least one improvement. I fear it is the only improvement. The magnificent lake I saw on my first visit is now completely dried up. However, another lake now exists and appears to be quite a bit larger. I assume one of the falling meteors created this lake due to its circular shape and the jutting rock that grows out of the center of the lake. The rest of this world seems like desert, although I, am, I will verify that statement with closer inspection. Though this world has little visual excitement to offer, it offers much to the ears. Sounds constantly flow through my ears, and I found where a few of them originate. It seems, as Catherine says, I do find beauty in everything. Last night I was awakened by a horrible hissing. I was sweating, and the heat was so intense that I immediately dipped my head in a nearby stream to cool it down. The hot breezes had returned along with a low roar from the ground. 
I walked a short distance to observe red flames shooting up from the earth. Suddenly, the ground began to crack. A huge chasm opened. The chasm continued to grow until it was far too wide to cross. Then the tumult subsided, leaving only a dull roar. I have decided, however, I can use the chasm to my advantage. Perhaps the heat from the chasm can be harnessed. Even as the chasm has ripped into the surface of this world, it has opened up a whole new world to explore. Although uncomfortably hot, I found it possible to reach a cave in the chasm that has been created. And have now explored deep into the crust of this planet. I have found a vast underground cave system that will take many years to map and explore. I will also look for a safer way to reach the underground than through the chasm wall. This age seems to change on its own, so I feel I should leave it again and see if things are different when I return. It is also important that I check on Cirrus and Agnar, make sure everything is going well with them. When I return, I also hope to bring back some tools I will need for my plans to explore the underground. The abundance of raw materials here is beginning to amaze me. I returned with some of the complex tools I knew I would be needing. I assumed I would have to return for more basic materials, however. It seems as though I will be able to find everything I need here. Of course, iron is abundant, but I also have found titanium occurring naturally. I am all the more excited to begin work. Everything is set, and I look forward to tomorrow. My raw materials are all, are all here. I think I will be able to have most of my additions to this age completed within one year. I also love working with my hands, whether writing or building. I began today on the bridge, and I have decided to... Three meters is not enough support for the beams, although amazingly strong. Has to be one of my most prized inventions. I am extremely... could never have imagined it to come together quite as... I doubt could possibly work with 14 instead of 8. Completely fatigued. I'm so happy to have completed tomorrow. I am leaving today in order to bring back Cirrus and Agnar. I have left them alone in Channelwood. I believe they will enjoy all there is to s I believe they will enjoy all there is to see here. The age seems to have stabilized. I believe the meteor set off a period of volcanic activity by piercing into the shallow crust, but the tremors have become few. I've noticed that a large amount of this journal has curiously vanished from the very pages on which I wrote over the last 18 months. Fortunately, I've copied many of my construction notes in, other, in another journal. I do not understand the many mysteries of this world, but I trust I will discover logical answers to my questions. I have a feeling that many of my questions can be answered in another age to which I hope to travel soon. But for now, I must simply accept this world's mysteries take pride in my accomplishments. Alright, so we got a very important uh, code here. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw that.
Yeah. Don't actually need most of this. Forget this. I'm just going to cheat and use my knowledge of music theory. So what I'm saying is low A, high C. flat backwards. Alright. There's only, f oh, there are five books here. Before arriving in this age, I was determined that it would be a journey to a world very different from my previous adventures, and it was. The sky here is dark and gray, and incessantly displays flashes of lightning in the distance. I met a very old man with a long beard and hair that hangs to his waist. He is very feeble and has trouble even moving. This man has obviously been through very many things in this strange world. I have learned many things from him. He has told me an interesting story of this world's history. Years ago, he told me, there was a beautiful city that rose up out of the water. It housed many people inside its walls. The people had everything they wished for. The city was surrounded by three high hills, which rose higher than the city. On the east hill of the city rested a large lookout post. The people of the city had constructed the post, expecting visitors to arrive from the east. The people had no means of traveling on the water, which forced them to merely wait for friend or foe. As time passed, friendly visitors brought rumors of an enemy that existed beyond the horizon. The people grew fearful, yet nothing happened. One day, the usually sunny sky became as dark as night, and black ships appeared on the horizon. The lookout post's attempts at peace were turned away, and the sentries there were easily overwhelmed. The ships continued to wreak havoc on the city, apparently destroying everyone and everything. After the foundations of the city were destroyed, the city sunk deep into the ocean, and only the lookout post remained. The black ship sailed away. The man continued to say that eight people had hidden and managed to survive through the attack. 
In the nine years since the attack, two of the survivors had died. He also said it was rumored that ten years from the attack, the enemy would return to finish the destruction they had started so long ago. I have decided, since hearing the man's story, it would be admirable to save the civilization and stop this enemy's plan of destruction. I am excited about the adventure that awaits me. An idea has sparked in my mind to provide the needed defenses for these people. I met the remaining survivors today, and I've begun work on a plan for protection. After a short absence, I return to this age with my two sons. They have, as of yet, traveled rarely with me, and they are understandably excited to be here. They have grown considerably since Eridun's, and it is already obvious to me that they will be a great help at this time instead of the nuisance they have been in the past. All three of us, along with four healthier survivors, began construction today. We are building upon the old city's ruins, which will provide a perfect foundation for our fortress. My sons have been spending much of their spare time on the South Island, where most of my materials are stored. I'm very pleased with their intelligence and their creativity. It's refreshing to see as they work on some small projects of their own. It has been over four months now, and the construction is going well. My sons love the world, except for its gray sky. They detest the gray sky, and tell me many times they wish the sky were like the blue sky and mist. The old man I first talked to tells me that the enemy is due in four months. I feel we will be ready when the time comes. The man reminds me of Emmett in many ways. I often wonder how Emmett and his people are doing. It has been six months of work, and we have finally finished the fortress. It rests between the three hills, which are now only islands due to a rising water level that the people experienced after the attack. Inside the fortress, I have designed a most intriguing device. It makes use of a technology called holography I have experimenting with on my own on my visits to Aspermere. It will be working in a couple days after I compensate for some small miscalculations. This holographic device will enable the, surround the survivors to learn to use the fortress. I think this is important, this drawing right here. But I don't remember how. I might have to come back for it. The enemy is due to come soon. And I trust the fortress will provide sufficient protection for all of us. Oh, right. This is a cool island. The insignia of the black ship. The black ships have come. That really isn't a hand-drawn picture. I can tell you that right now. The black ships have come. Their attack was substantial. Their weapons have been stopped, and it appears they've turned away in defeat. I could not help but smile as I watched the boats leave. Last night we had a small celebration, and the old survivors danced their dances of old. My sons did not understand why the sky had not turned back to its original blue. The old man told them that the storms would never end until the enemy was destroyed. I assured my sons that a blue sky was not worth the risk of death. They seemed to hear me. I've had a healthy adventure, and I've begun work on a new book. Once again, I must leave a familiar age in search of a new universe I have begun. But first, I will have an extended time with Catherine, whom I miss very much. I also must return to the people of the Tide. I believe in my many travels I have found a substance that will ease the pain of their bone ailments that they have long endured. I hope to return to mechanical age one day and find the population growing my fortress still strong, but the sky may always be black. I am confident the people here feel the heavier darkness has been lifted from their so shoulders. Alright, last book. Let's see if... No, they don't. Some of these... I know in 
Riven, which is the second one, and Exile, which is the third one, uh, they have added abilities for the books to read themselves. And it's actually built in Revelations, which is the fourth game. Rhyme, I have named it. A desolate age with a beauty that is quite different than I had expected or imagined. The intricate feathers of ice that fall from the sky are all inspiring. I feel as though I could sit and watch them for hours. And though it is cold here, like I have never experienced before, I find myself enjoying the change of temperature, for it is unlike any other place that I have ever seen. Perhaps the oddest thing is the silence. Although the wind blows on occasion, when it ceases, there is a suffocating silence that falls on this place, broken only by the distant cries of unseen creatures. I have visited three times, and I am now sure that this age will provide the environment I need. I believe the cold temperature is necessary for obtaining the correct resonance. Examining the structure of the books is ever more perplexing, but I am driven onward by my need to understand the great tree of possibilities can never be fully grasped but I must say at least but I must at least try to find one particular branch on the subject of enlightenment I would also like to find the cause of the mysterious lights that shine in the darkness here though I never assumed that I would be able to build especially fast here the speed at which I am progressing is somewhat disappointing I do think I will bring Sirius and Agnar as well some of the machinery from Salentic. Salentic. I'll probably just call it Salentic. <laughs> Agnar choose to, chose to stay with Catherine, but Sirius was rather excited to come. He has spent the last few days here with me, helping me with the beginning phases of construction. He too seems to enjoy the ice and cold weather. He is intrigued with the crystals that we have brought with us. He has been a big help, as have others, and I hope to be able to begin my experiments here soon. Tonight, Sirius and I found a wondrous spot to view the lights, although it seems they decided to hide from us. After sitting in the cold winds for over two hours, we saw nothing. It was rather disappointing. Sirius will return to Miss tomorrow. He has been a tremendous aid to me, and I am thankful for his willingness to help. The hard part of the construction is over, although I have decided after tonight that I would like to add some kind of observation post. I won't be finished as soon as I had hoped, although I'm fairly certain it will be worth the delay in the long run. I've decided to take a break from the construction, from the construction now that tunnel is almost complete, and I have been able to set up a temporary space where the crystals will not be sim stimulated. I'm quite convinced that with the right diffraction resonance, certain properties of the ink can be st simulated. Catherine still finds it absurd and thinks I'm crazy to assume I will be able to view ages with stones, but her Unusual pessimism has not convinced me to stop trying. I came too close to success, to success on Everdunes. I am fairly certain now the temperature indeed has an effect on the crystals, but I have realized that the temperature alone is not enough. The, the cold dampens some of the sympathetic harmonics, sympathetic harmonics, but a more active suppressor is necessary. I've acquired some goods with a pure... Alright. Let's try this sentence again. I've acquired some geodes with a pure protected crystalline interior. Thin slices of the geodes below each crystal provided a stabilizing effect and even amplified the clean frequency slightly. After quite a bit of experimentation with the shapes and colors, I was able to capture a blurry image within a book. Though the ink would never... Though the link would never work, it was clearly an age on the other side. I can hardly wait to return and tell Catherine I feel like I should finish the shaft of my observation pose while I have the machinery here, perhaps tomorrow morning. The lights were beautiful again last night. They had not shown themselves for so long that I had almost forgotten their beauty. 
He still must find the cause. Feeling rather, o I am feeling ra rather overwhelmed with what remains to be done. Crystals have not been perfected. The shaft is not finished, nor is the observation post, or even the lab. I have not seen Catherine for some time, and I long to spend more time with Agnar and Cirrus. Besides all that, there are far away, in the, black, in the back of my mind, the thoughts of my people and our lost city. I jumped again with them last night. I have only seen the city in its worst condition, and still its beauty overwhelms me. Even now, as I visualize how majestic it must have been before the destruction caused by Viovis and Agaris, it amazes and saddens me. I'm fairly certain that the Dini is not the Dini is not dead, as my father believed, and convinced that there must be some who managed to escape the destruction even now continue to survive in separate ages. Within me is an urgent to take the chance and return to Denny, to find these survivors and properly rebuild our city. However, I can do nothing until I am certain of the fate of my father. If my plan failed, if I missed a single book when attempting to trap him or Riven, then he has been free all along. If that is true, then all that stands between him and the ages I have now written is the ink from Dini to Mist. Is the link from Dini to Mist. As much as I wish to return the Dini without knowing the state of my father, I cannot risk re-establishing that link. I must observe my father without re-establishing that link. It's taken several years. There have been many dead ends, but I have partially succeeded. Now that I have managed to view another age using crystals, it is only a matter of time until I view Riven. At least, I hope. Catherine will have her ideas about all of these things. I miss her greatly. I will return to Rhyme later, when my mind is cleared. Alright, so we're going to mark down that we need to use 40. And it's not going to make very much sense to you. But I need to write it down now. Okay. Thank you for putting up with that. Um, I'm going to end this video. And uh, start a new one now that we've read all the books.